Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. I'm Patrick Brass. Welcome to Rochester Homeless Union. We're at the House of Mercy. And throughout the years, I've been dealing in the sheltering system. I've witnessed and seen and heard and heard talk about the many deaths of our people. And having a memorial is very meaningful to our team of people because we have concern. Throughout the years, past and present, poverty and homelessness has taken the lives of our people. And seemingly without a concern, these lives carry no memory because they're overlooked. The Homeless Union and the many families are not given a day as a memorial to remember, to love, and miss their presence among us. We remember the names and in our hearts, we will continuously love them. Their lives carried a reason and served a purpose. Homelessness kills and we wish no more death in the streets. Their lives will never be forgotten. Sister Gates, you want to speak about your experience with homelessness? Mm -hmm. Can I introduce myself? Yes, yes. Hi, I'm Sister Grace Miller, um, Director of the House of Mercy in Rochester, New York. Well, we opened up the House of Mercy in 1985, so we're 35 years old. And we opened it up to, to help homeless people. I found homeless people on the streets, picked them up and took them to homeless shelters, only to have the homeless shelters refuse them. And when I experienced so much of this, I decided we needed to open up one homeless shelter that would be open 24 24 seven, when any homeless person or anyone, no matter what hour of day or need, could have their needs met and have the doors open where they could come in and be taken care of and accepted and loved and deeply welcomed. So we helped um, many homeless people and we became advocates, helping them to find housing, get medical insurance, whatever their problems were, we helped them with them to cut through the red tape that kept our people from getting the, the things that are rightfully due them. And in the midst of all of this, uh, while we're helping people to survive and to cut through the red tape of the system, the bureaucracy that keeps our people down and oppressed, many of our people were dying. And it was very painful to see people we knew, we loved just dying suddenly and many were dying because of their poverty and some were dying naturally to drugs and alcohol, but it was mostly the poverty. And what struck me was that in two weeks, we had five burials. In three months, we had 25 burials. And these are all poor people, homeless people, people on the streets. You can see these 
these uh, this cross with the names of our people who died hanging on the cross. And there are many more than this. Uh, it was very painful to have our people die young uh, and suddenly, and their families would come crying to us because they didn't know what to do for the funerals. Uh, and we had to immediately get into the burial ministry as well as the ministry to the homeless because it became so heavy. And we made sure that every single homeless person that we buried had a dignified Christian burial. And we had a church, a pastor, my brother, who was a priest, um, my twin brother, who opened up his church so that we could have funerals there for anyone, regardless of their religion, uh, it made no difference. So we had many, many, many burials. And so what we did, we were so close to our people and we hated to see them go. So we would have the obituaries, but we want, and I hung the obituaries on the wall in my office. They were sometimes four deep. And because we missed our people, we loved them. We didn't want to forget them and we didn't want others to forget them. And so we put their names on cards like this and every Easter we would celebrate their lives and we would help people to remember their loved ones who had died and all of our homeless who had died. There were thousands of them that, that died and we still carry on the same ministry today. Um, many people um, at Easter time, we would name, read off all the names of our people that have died and it would take hours, but the people sat through it all and listened to it because many names were names of their own relatives and close friends. And it was, it was very touching and very spiritual. Uh, we can never forget our homeless. This is why we're doing this. They'll always have a place in our hearts, in our lives. And so every year we would have this memorial uh, service for them. Uh, we don't want to forget them because they are, they are such an important part of our lives. And we still have this going on today. Today we are still involved with many burials Many of our people still dying. Um, in the earlier days, they didn't have medical insurance. You know, they didn't really have any doc. Many didn't have doctors, uh, but we make sure that our people get medical insurance and have doctors. And even with that, many of our homeless still are dying due to the stress in their lives. Um, many living on the streets is a very difficult thing. It's very difficult for them, and so we want to make life as pleasant and positive as we can for our homeless. We want them to know that we care for them. We love them in life and also in death. That's why we cannot forget them and we hold the memorial service for them because they'll always be a part of our lives. Those who died 35 years ago, when we opened up the House of Mercy to today, they will always all be a part of our hearts, a part of our lives. We can never forget them. They all left their mark. And it's so important for the homeless that are neglected, ignored, but in our lives, they're respected, they're loved, and they're extolled. And we love them, we want them to be remembered. So we will continue to do what we're doing to give life and hope and remembrance to our people who have died, but also to their families and to the homeless that are living are with us. When they know that we are doing this for those who have died, they know too that they will be remembered and they will be remembered because it is something we will always continue to do. Lakol ish yes shem, shnatan lo Elohim, v'natnu lo aviv v'imo. Each person has a name. We each have a name given by God and given by our father and mother. We each have a name given by our stature and smile and given by our attire. We each have a name given by the hills and given by the walls. We each have a name given by the stars and given by our friends. 
We each have a name given by our sins and given by our yearnings. We each have a name given by our enemies and given by love. We each have a name given by celebrations and given by our work. We each have a name given by the seasons and given by our blindness. We each have a name given by the sea and given by our death. This poem urges us to remember the names of those who have died, to honor their memories, to hold them close in our hearts as we continue forward. Yizkor Elohim nishmot kol achenu vachyotenu b'nei Yisrael v'kol amcha ba'alam shemasru et nafshotehem. May God remember forever our brothers and sisters. May they be at one with the may, may they be at one with the one who is life eternal. May the beauty of their lives shine forevermore. And may my life always bring honor to their memory. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we will remember them. In the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we will remember them. In the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we will remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we will remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. We remember all those who have died and pray that their memories will bless us and inspire us. And we pray that they will rest in peace. We should call their names. Pete Smith, 1945, 2020, his death. Kenneth Edward Scott, October 23rd, 2020, born September 13th, 1960. Fred L. Ray, born October 27th, 1940, passed April 11th, 2020. Juan Brinson. I'm going to tell a few minutes to speak about Juan. Juan is one of our close at hand that all of our people, his residents in the House of Mercy, are all close at hand. But we have some special people that come through in our lives that we watch grow. And it hurts even more so to watch them pass. Juan Brinson, born 1978, still living on our hearts, April 2020. Rosa. Lee Harris, born August 27th, 1949, died September 10th, 2020. Kate Smith, sunrise, February 22nd, 1945, sunset at August 15th, 2020. Daniel P. Driscoll. 
born 27th of June, 1962, died August 14th, 2020 at age 58. Francis Alexander, Sunrise, September 4th, 1931, Sunset, November 7th, 2020. Mary Louise Jeffries, I remember Mary. Sorry about that, I'm looking through her thing. She died Tuesday, November 17th, 2020. I remember Mary, every time I saw her, she would put the biggest smile on my face. Mm -hmm. mm, that hit home. Loving memories of Mary. Thank you. Would you join me in prayer? Giver of life, we are gathered in your presence this night with heavy purposes. We are here to remember and to grieve those who might otherwise still be with us, if not for the rigors they faced because their community couldn't or wouldn't help them as much as needed. Remembering them requires first the confession of a community. Forgive us, giver of life, for allowing a few to bear the cost of the misgivings of many. Give us the courage to reflect on our society and make bold changes where they are needed. Remembering also requires that we, re we reflect on who they were. So give those who knew these personally the gift of clear, fond, and lasting memories of their touch, their voice, their laugh, their love. And for those who didn't know them personally, let our memory be in not forgetting. There have been, and there are, many who escape our notice. So widen our gaze that we may all know and be known. And perhaps the hardest purpose for us this day is to grieve. We pray that our grief not be in vain, but that you make of it a redemptive moment. When we get stuck in our sadness, hold us, that we may know your love and comfort. Where our sadness turns to denial, wake us up, that we might know the realities before us. Where our sadness turns to acceptance, let us accept only that we are able to move on after loss and that love remains after death. But let us never accept these losses as normal. Where our sadness becomes anger, make of it a transforming anger bent on change. Into, into your eternal care we commend those we've lost. Amen. These are many of our friends who were with us during our 35 years and who we will never forget. And when we read their names, their names bring back such memories, memories of joy, memories of sadness, but we continue to pray for them, knowing that as we love them, God loves them and continues to love them. And we place them all in God's loving hands to cherish as we cherish them while they were on earth because we did cherish them. 
James Legg, one of our deepest friends, born June 15th, 1951 and died April 3rd, 2019. Ruby Moore, another very familiar name, died March 5th, 2019. Derek Hazel, died January 28th, 2019. And these are some of our recent ones because we have our names going back to 1985. Bertha Rucker died January 1st, 2018. Lula Parker, can never forget her. A long time friend of the House of Mercy that we took care of during her sickness, died January 29th, 2018. Gary DeMartin, died February 8th, 2018. Sandra Humphrey, May 14th, 2018. Many of them have nicknames. Our great friend, Thomas Hardaway, called Fuzzy, died September 20th, 2017. Linda Danzi, real good friend of the House of Mercy, who always touched our hearts. April 23rd, 2017. Melissa Wilson, died July, 2017. Willie White, who was always, always, always here, homeless. And we did find a place to live. He still came back to be with his friends here at the House of Mercy, like many of them did. And then one day they passed. July 11th, 2016. Gerald Millman Jr., August 1st, 2016. Philip Jones, April 2016. Darius Burke Wells, that August 16th, 2016. These are just some of the names that will always, always be in our hearts. Many of them were people on the streets and had no place to live and came to the House of Mercy and we welcomed them and we loved them, prayed with them and hoped with them and sat the bedsides with them. Many of them would have been forgotten and just put in their graves with no one there to celebrate their lives. But we made sure that every single one of our homeless who died with us would have a beautiful funeral service and be remembered and their lives remembered. It was interesting that when we would hold funerals for our homeless and the names would be in the obituary in the newspaper, we would hold the, the service, the funeral service and a family member would walk in and we heard this story over and over. I looked for my brother or my son or my loved one. For years, I didn't know where he or she was. And I worried about the per I worried about him or her, prayed for him or her, just wondering for years and years where he or she was. I looked in the newspaper, in the obituary, and I saw my loved ones name in the papers Then I knew and they would come to the funeral and say for years and years they didn't know where their loved ones were but at least now they found them and they were grateful that someone took care of them and so we thank God for all the lives of all our homeless all the people that have come to us they still come to us those who have died will remain forever in our hearts, never ever to be forgotten. And always, as you can see here, 
always to be remembered and prayed for. So let us love our homeless, welcome them into our homes and into our hearts, and pray that God take good care of them, as we know God will and does, because God's love for them is extremely, extremely great and deep. So we're grateful to be able to remember our homeless, who may have been forgotten by many, but will never be forgotten by us. Hi friends, I'm Reverend Myra Brown. The scripture that I've chosen today is Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 57 and 58, and it reads, As they were walking along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, Foxes have dens, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Humanity has no place to lay his head. Now, this is the one place in the scriptures where Jesus speaks about homelessness. And when he speaks of it, he is referring to himself. He pitches himself in the struggle of those who have no place to lay their heads, the homeless of our world. That is where God is asking us, friends, to place ourselves as well, with the homeless, those who struggle each and every day for a place to lay their heads, for warm sheets, warm, safe bed, a hot meal, hospitality, to feel the love of God for who they are and not for what they may or may not have. Men and women who will courageously battle the outdoors, putting their lives on the line, trusting God to provide for them each day as they call on us today to pay attention to the injustice of homelessness. These are spiritual men, women, and children created after God's image and likeness who often do a better job sharing their resources and creating community than those of us who have houses in which to rest our heads. So they challenge us today. In my life, I've taken many um, who were homeless into my home, trying to honor the biblical mandate of compassion and welcoming the stranger and being given to hospitality. Sometimes these folks were referred to me, others have broken to my heart because of their circumstances, and still others I stumbled across because God wanted us to meet and to help each other, to continue to believe in God's vision for the world that all might find a place to call home. At times it was scary, but I knew that each time that we were both being called and being led to trust God in those moments, to trust what God was doing. It was a reminder to me that everything that I have, my house, my car, my money, my time, my life belonged to God. And whenever God gets ready to use it, that I needed to be at the ready to give it back to God. And yet for everyone who shared a room in my house, there were hundreds still out on the streets in search of a place to call home. So today we honor those who we have lost to homelessness. And two men that I think of is a man named James Jr. Holloway and Cleveland Green. They are two people that I think of who struggled with homelessness and eventually lost their battle to it. I grew up with James Jr as a kid. James Jr. was loud and he was funny and he was courageous and he was protective and he struggled with alcoholism and he dated my sister. We kids loved hanging out with James Jr. He always knew how to make you laugh and feel special. He inspired me with his fearlessness and how he modeled standing up to people with power. I could never have known though at the age of 10 years old that by the time I would turn 50 that James Jr. would lose his life to homelessness. Cleveland was another man. Cleveland would show up at our church every Sunday and he'd sit out on the step and he'd try to convince me every Sunday that every Sunday was his birthday and that I should give him a gift. 
usually it was some money. And he would sit there with his big smile and his infectious laugh and his persnickety attitude. But he too would lose his battle to homelessness and all the instability and the hardships that come along with it. So today I honor these two. I honor them for all of their laughs. I honor Cleveland for his spontaneous singing and dancing that he would do when he was having a good day. I remember the shock of going into the House of Mercy once and seeing all of the saved obituaries that Sister Grace had on the billboard there of all the men, women uh, that had lost their lives to homelessness. It was heartbreaking. So I honor House of Mercy today for always being there in so many of our homeless shelters in our city. You know, Jesus knew that he could not be at home in this world until all of God's children found a place to call home. So today I'm grateful, grateful for the National Union of the Homeless and the Rochester Homeless Union. They've been leading us in the work to end homelessness. They've launched the Winter Homeless Offensive that began on Thanksgiving and will go through January 15th, 2021. They're calling on us through this campaign to interrogate systems that create homelessness. They're calling on us to leadership that is overdue, to bear witness by naming the problem and attending to it with solutions that work. As Jesus pitched himself in the struggle, friends, and circumstances of homelessness, may we too pitch ourselves in the struggle with him in a commitment to turn it around to challenge these systems of power, to interrogate structures and practices that are complicit and keep it in place. So let this memorial service that we're having be a jumpstart by which we not only honor those who died from homelessness, but may the work we do in the community and in our nation allow Jesus and the homeless to join the foxes who found dens, the birds of the air who have their nests, may they find a home place of their own to lay their heads. Jesus reminds us in our faith tradition that what we do unto the least, we do it unto him. And President John F. Kennedy once said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Friends, this is sacred work. This is holy work. This is God's work. Amen. I'd like to introduce Jamal Coy Hudson. He's with the New York State Poor People's Campaign, Arts and Culture. No. As we enter this winter season right now, let us stop and acknowledge the countless lives that have been lost this year. Many people have died. Many people have died. Many people have died. So many of the people that passed were hurting before the pandemic ever began. So many struggled to access housing and were living on the streets where it was cold. For too long, our homeless brothers and sisters have been hurting. But we thank you right now, Lord, for the house of mercy. We thank you for Sister Grace. We thank you for Mr. Patrick. We thank you for Sabine. And as we work together to march towards freedom, where that beloved community is, 
where everyone is sheltered, where everyone is protected. And justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. There'll be no more mourning. There'll be no more mourning. There'll be no more mourning. No more crying. No more crying. No more crying after a while. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. Take my place with those who've loved and fought before. No more sorrow. No more sorrow. No more sorrow after a while. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. Take my place with those who loved and fought before. I know you're gonna miss me. I know you're gonna miss me. I know you're gonna miss me after a while. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. Take my place with those who've loved and fought before. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom after a while. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. Take my place with those who've loved and fought before. Um, no more sickness, no more sickness, no more sickness after a while. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. Take my place with those who've loved and fought before. No more trouble, no more trouble, no more trouble after a while. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. Take my place with those who've loved and fought before. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom after a while. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. Take my place with those who've loved and fought before. Take my place with those who loved and fought before. First, I'd like to thank you, um, Rabbi Stein, for your prayer, Pastor Barden, for your words, and Reverend Mara Brown. I'm going to ask that, you know, winter is coming. So I'm going to ask each of you to continue to pray, to ask God, as I ask God, to walk with me as I go to oversee and to look after our people that are still in the street. I want to thank God that we were blessed this year to be given some of the things that are necessary to sustain life in the cold weather in the tent cities, under the bridges and in the bus stations, in the little 
things that people like in front of the public uh, library, people actually sleep out there and in the garage, in the weeds, behind the Radisson. Just keep us in prayer. Ask God to put his hand on us and keep us warm. Ask God to give us the strength to carry on, to provide all that we need to stay alive. There's a many a death that we've passed through, passed by that's been here. And I've seen on the street and I don't want to see any more deaths in the street. We understand that poverty stricken, but we've learned that homelessness kills. I want to ask Sister Grace to come speak a few words before we end. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just want to tell uh, two stories Although we have many, many countless stories because we have thousands of our homeless who have passed away. Uh, when we opened up on Hudson Avenue, there was a man living in a tin hut and winter came along and he couldn't stay in the, home, in the tin hut, of course. He came to the House of Mercy and stayed with us night and day. We took care of him and then one day he died and we buried him. We took care of him from the moment he came to the House of Mercy to the moment he died. And that's what our ministry here at the House of Mercy is all about. And there was a homeless man who died. We had the wake and the funeral service. And at the wake, two daughters came in. They had seen his obituary in the newspaper. They came in crying their hearts out because they did not know where their father was. They had not seen him in years. And then his sister came in crying uncontrollably. She had not seen her brother in years. And they were so sad and heartbroken. Yet through their tears, they could say how grateful they were. That at least they found their father and their brother and someone had taken care of him. So there are many stories like that. And we just want to help our people who are homeless to live full lives while they are on this earth and to die happy and holy deaths. And we want to be with them from the time they come to us to the time they die to make sure they are having dignified funerals because they are worthy of all of this. And so we ask our blessed Lord to take care of all our homeless. Jesus was homeless. He knew what it was like. He knows what our homeless go through. We see every day what our homeless go through. And we want so badly, so much, to give them beautiful lives and help them to live their full lives here on earth and to die happy and holy deaths. And we had a hospice here. You know, we took care of two of our homeless who were dying in our hospice. At least they had a place at the end of their lives to find peace and rest. And Jamel, I want to say your song, your singing was beautiful, very heartfelt. You put your whole heart and soul into it. And we put our, try to put our whole hearts and souls into our ministry with our homeless for the living and for the dying. Thank you and God bless all of you. <clears throat> I'd like us to close out with a song from Janelle. There's a sound I want you to hear. There's a sound I want you to hear. Listen to Sister Grace. Listen to Mr. Patrick. They're serving the homeless. They're working for the poor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen. Listen. 
Somebody's hurting my people And it's gone on far too long Yes, it's gone on far too long mm, It's gone on far too long Somebody's hurting my people uh, And it's gone on far too long And we won't be silent anymore uh, Somebody's ignoring the homeless and it's gone on far too long Yes, it's gone on far too long mm, It's gone on far too long uh, Somebody's ignoring the uh, homeless uh, And it's gone on far too long And we won't be silent anymore mm. somebody's denying us housing uh, and it's gone on far too long yes it's gone on far too long yes it's gone on far too long uh, somebody's denying us housing uh, and it's gone on far too long and we won't be silent anymore and we won't be silent anymore no no and we